Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather, your host, and I'm 28 from the United Kingdom. This little channel of mine is filled with empowerment and creativity, documenting my journey, making moments and memories. You'll find lots of yarny goodness, crochet, knitting, and my endeavors to become a designer. If you are brand new, hi, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining the tribe. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back tribe. Welcome to 2019. Happy New Year to you all. This is my first, first vlog of 2019. And wow, what a great year 2018 was all in all. Okay, so. I've got some announcements for you all. I've got a finished object, one finished object. I've got um, two, three works in progress. Um, and I've got a few other bits and bobs. So I'm gonna go into the sort of admin, tell you what's been going on. Um, so, wow. There's quite a few. Are you ready for this? I hope you've got your drink. I hope you're nice and ready and you're crocheting or you're knitting along. I kind of feel like I should get some knitting myself. Okay. First things first. Um, my last vlog to go up in 2018 was my YouTube live. It was, it was amazing. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. Um, so if you haven't seen that, please go and watch that. I ended up being online for over two hours, I think it's like two hours, 20 minutes, talking away to you all, answering your questions, and it was great. So, spoiler alert, there's gonna be more of those coming. So, I just wanted to say at the top of this episode, thank you so, so much to everyone that turned up. Thank you to everyone that, has, that commented, and thank you to everyone that has watched since. Um, I really, really enjoyed that and it was a great way to end the year. Um, and just, I wanted to say as well, thank you to everyone that followed me on this journey in 2018 because January 31st, 2018, so almost a year ago now, I decided I was going to fully commit to this YouTube little thing I've got going on and put out regular vlogs. And in, for the main part, I have done that. You have had a vlog every week, just about. Um, I think I put out something like 50 odd last year, which means you almost got one per week, which, wow, that's a great commitment. Um, and I went from something like 30 subscribers to a tribe that is now over 700 strong. So, my heart. Thank you all so much for turning up and watching me, for the support you give me, for the encouragement, for everything that you teach me. I genuinely love, love, love doing this and I love the community that I have found, this little tribe, it's amazing. So thank you from the bottom of my heart of all my soul for being here. Um, 2018, <sighs> as just a little recap so we can put that to one side is the year that I made my first ever knitted jumper it's the year that I started designing garments for myself so I made a shrug I made um, I started making a jumper I made a couple of cardigans I started on sock patterns and so much much more behind the scenes that I haven't shown you yet um, and then it's also the year that HGDC just grew um, yeah, I'm blown away by it all and it's been an absolutely wonderful, solid platform for everything that I've got in store for you for 2019 this year. So, shall I tell you all my plans? Ooh, what I'm going to do first is, because this will give you an overview of where I'm heading, I'm going to tell you my one little word for 2019. Now, I don't know if any of you else do this. I know a few of you do, Kalisha and a couple of others. What a one little word is, is you pick one word as like a governing principle throughout your year. I have done this since 2012. Um, 
what was my first word? My first word was something like, it was something to do with healing because of that time period I was in. It's probably a good idea I don't share you all my words because they're actually really, really personal. Um, um, last year's was elevation, the year before that was resilience, consistency, resilience, prosperity, and so on and so back, all the way to 2012. And what you do with this one word is you just apply it to everything. So in every aspect, in every endeavour, everything you're doing in your life, you apply this one word. And so for 2019, I've gone with simplify. Now, for me, 2018, the year of elevation, I realised to get to the levels that I want to be, I'm going to have to put down some of the things that I'm carrying because you can't get any higher if you're holding on to all this rubbish. So I realised that although I want to do all of the things and I can do all of the things, if I want to get to certain levels with things such as HGDC, some things need to be put down for now so I can really concentrate on this. And so that's kind of carried forward into this year. Um, last year as well with my health, I didn't feel, I wasn't very well for a lot of the year and because of that, when you don't have much energy, you can only focus on what's really, really important and by doing that, I actually learned to strip out a lot of the unnecessary things in my life. I kind of feel like that should be a vlog all in itself and I'm just going to give you a very quick overview. So let me know if you want me to do a vlog on my one word because I'm more than happy to, I love it. Um, so 2018 really was the year that I started to minimalise my life and although I'm not a minimalist, I live a much, much simpler life than I did this time last year, this time two years ago. So this time two years ago, I moved out into my first little home by myself um, it was just three rooms really, it was the bedroom, the bathroom and a huge um, lounge kitchen diner. And I moved in and I didn't have much stuff so I did what everyone does and I crammed it full, full of stuff. More and more yarn, more and more clothes, just so much stuff. And then I kind of outgrew that space because I had so much stuff. And I've moved into this house that I'm in now, which is a two bedroom house with a conservatory and a garage. And you know, when I moved all my stuff here, moving, anyone who's moved house, you know this, moving made me realize how much junk I'd accumulated and how much I didn't use. And so I had a mass clear out then of just junk. Um, and then my bedroom here is slightly larger than the one at the previous house. And I just sort of decluttered and got rid of all of the random bits and had a really big tidy up. So, you know, the bits that you'd stuffed away that you meant to deal with are dealt with. And I really liked it because there was just so much more room in this house. And then as time went on, the house was a little bit too big for me and for costs, for the sake of for financial reasons should I say, decided to get a housemate and so I swapped into the smaller room because it's a bit of an awkward size and so doing that I'd gone from having a house all to myself to needing to fit into this room um, and that room was HDDC headquarters, I used to record in that room. Um, so I went from a triple wardrobe you guys, triple wardrobe with like cupboard space as well to a single wardrobe and a chest of drawers. Um, then all of my books were down here in the lounge and um, as one housemate went and another one came, I halved all of my space in here so that my housemate could have half as well. Which meant that because I had an entire bookshelf crammed full of books, they all went upstairs and then we reassessed and she wasn't really using the bookshelves so a lot of my books are now back down here. I just have a very select few upstairs. And I have all of my yarn and all of my craft related stuff within this room. Um, but it is so much more condensed than what it ever was two, three, even last year. Um, and then as for my bedroom, if you're on Patreon, you will have seen 
I got a new carpet laid and I took that as an opportunity to just get it how I wanted it. I was going to say really zen. So I went from a single wardrobe in my chest of drawers to just a rail and then I've got a couple of cubbies that I've got some shoes in. Um, so that's this massive, massive change from going from a triple wardrobe, ram packed, full, jammed, just solidly packed full of clothes to just a rail and a little bit of like, I've got one of them hanging organisers and that's it, that is it. And I did that over the course of last year because I was spending a lot of time in my room because I wasn't well and I do not like clutter and I do not like mess. I like everything to look really pretty around me. I like it to be beautiful. Um, so my room is where where I want it to be and I also declutter a lot of my um, craft stuff as well which is the other big part of my life. Um, and I, you know I'm gonna just have to do a vlog purely on minimalism and simplifying 2019 because I have so much to share with you but it will suffice to say for now that becoming more minimalist, cutting out the junk and what's not needed left me with the, well I was going to say more time but it didn't, it meant that I, the little bit of time energy I had I could focus on what was important which for me is Darcy, it's church, it's making things with HGDC, it's my health, you know, these things are so, so important. Reading, nurturing my mind, my soul, that is what I want to concentrate on. I don't want to spend hours and hours tidying up, it's just a waste of time and I begrudge it and I, you know? So, vlog on Simplify is coming for y'all. Um, and with stripping out everything, and my health now returning, thank you Lord, I am finding that I've got more little pockets of time because it doesn't take me hours and hours to get my laundry done because I have like a lot less clothes to wash and wear and put away. And so that means that I've got more time for HGDC and more time to read. So. As my word is simplify, and I'm applying that to every aspect of my life. For HGDC, that means, it just very simply means, that I am going to work on and concentrate on doing whatever makes my soul happy. If there is a project that is shouting out to me, I'm going to focus my time on that. So you've seen the beaded jumpers, you've seen some of the projects that I've planned to make. And so with that, I have a make nine of projects that I want to make. Um, and also with simplifying, I have found that I work better as a single tasker. So pick a task and do it. And remember when I went glamping last year, I took like three projects with me and I got so much done because I just solely focused on those projects. So I had one that I did while I was traveling I had one that I could do whilst I was sat comfy. I had another one if I had 10 minutes to myself and I could use my journal. And I gave my time and focus to those and I got so much done in those few days that I carried that principle on. And I'm gonna carry that into 2019. Here we are. I've got one knitting project, one crochet project and one on the go project. And by focusing my soul time onto those projects, I get so much more done. Um, there is that whole, oh, but I really want to start this, but as I've been through with you before, everything goes in my journal, so I can plan ahead of what I want to do once this ne once one of the projects I'm working on is finished. So, I'm going to work on what I want to, and I'm going to be sort of single track minded, <clears throat> which brings me to my make nine. So for my make nine for 2019 in my new bullet journal which I've set up again I'm happy to vlog f purely on my journals because I love 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 my journals so I have got want to see the front page here we go another way that I carry on um, with the simplify theme with my one little word is I surround myself with it so it is on my light box, simplify, so that I always see it, so it's always in my mind. 
I make a vision board every year and before I moved into my own place, my vision boards were in my journal because my journal went with me wherever I was and I wasn't necessarily always at home um, with studying, with boyfriends and whatever else. So it always was in my journal. Then when I moved out, I made a huge, like it was two A3 pieces of paper, huge vision board for 2017. Um, and that was the year of consistency. Yeah, the year of consistency. 2018 was elevation. And then last year I made an A4 one which was much smaller and much more focused. I started to bring in that more minimal minimalism. And this year I printed off quite a bit of stuff to put on my vision board and I knew what I wanted it to look like. And then when I started making it a few days before New Year's, it was just too fussy. So my vision board for 2019 looks like this. It simply states, all you need is less. I'm showing you the reflection because of the glass. I picked up this frame, because I frame my vision board so that I can move them around and they're protected. Um, I picked up this frame, which has got this embossed detail, which I love, in white. Really nice texture from the pound shop. And the background, sometimes I will go and get wallpaper swatches from shops or all sorts of different things. It was just a bit of um, off cut paper from an old journal project. And out of everything that I printed off, I just felt that I needed that to be there all the time. And it's really working because I went into the shops when the sales were on and all I could see in my head is, all you need is less. Don't, I do not need all of this stuff. Yes, it's cheap. Yes, I would like it. But what are you going to do with it? It's more junk. It's more clutter. It's something else you've got to take care of. Do you really need it? Isn't that money better off in your bank? Just wow. Like, I have applied Simplify to my finances, which again, I'll vlog purely on one little word and is a game changer. So another way that I make sure that I keep my one word in my life is it's in the front page of my bullet journal. Now I'll put some pictures in, um, but it states, I put quotes in because I live my life by quotes and there's two on this. Um, I've put, let me read them to you first. Your ambition should be to get as much life out of living as you possibly can, as much enjoyment, as much interest, as much experience, as much understanding, and not to simply be what is generally called a success by Eleanor Roosevelt. And then the other one, you don't need all the things you think you need to do all the things you feel called to do. You have all you need right now, right here, now make life beautiful. And they are, they just encapsulate everything that Simplify is to me. Um, how many of us sit there and think, I really wanna do this, but in order to do that, I need this, 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 and this, which means I've got to spend like 200 quid. Do you really need all of that stuff? Are you just putting barriers in your own way? Are you making your own obstacles? If you look at what you've got, can you not already use what you've got? Because, the amount of times I do that to myself and I buy stuff and it sits there unused three weeks later. Why do we do it? But anyway, let's stay on topic. I have printed off this, these quotes from Pinterest, put them on. That bit of paper actually was an off cut from Elevation's mood board last year, vision board. This, I loved the pink and the cross, so I wanted that on there. And then this is a gift tag um, that I cut off the top and put on for a little bit of texture. And then I've written the word simplify using these corkboard stickers, which were probably from the works or somewhere like that. Um, and that really encapsulates my colours for this year as well. So the pinks, um, the metallic gold, the rose gold, the geometric shapes, and of course glitter. That is right up my street. So that is my vision board page for Simplify 2019. I imagine I will go through a couple of these this year, but that's fine. 
And then just to quickly show you, I have put in a calendar for quick reference. And then to carry on with simplify, I write out the definition, what simplify means to me. And it's also got some scriptures on there. Um, I'm going to save that because I'm going to do a vlog on simplify for you all. Then I've also got a 30 before I'm 30 in my vlog, in, a, in my vlog, in my bullet journal. But I think I'll do a separate vlog on my bullet journal setup. If you're all interested, that is. Um, and I've got my 30 before I'm 30 books. So on my 30 before 30, I put 30 books before I'm 30. So I've created 60 before I'm 30, but whatevs. Um, and then my make nine. There is um, space to do my January setup, which I haven't done. And there's some doodles of some designs in here, which I will show you when we get to whips. Okay, so my make nine for 2019. Now make nine comes from, and my mind's just drawn a blank. If you've watched Full and, Full and Fine's vlog, um, all the details are given there and I'll try and put it below for you but there was somebody on Instagram who basically has with um, the Instagram layout you've got the nine squares and they've put in each one a picture of the projects that they want to make for, for their year and so I decided I'm going to do that this year because I feel that as I've now simplified my life that I will be able to really focus on these projects and make them come to life. Um, usually people pick patterns that they've seen that they really want to make. Mine is slightly different in that for me I want to make clothes for myself from my own designs and so I've put a mix of that on here. Um, now it does feel a little bit overwhelming because there's so much to do but I've already made a good inroads on it so let's see how we go. We are on the 9th of January today and I've got the rest of the year I can do this. So in no particular order, for number one, the number one, no particular order for number one. In no particular order, the first item that I want to make for 2019, which doesn't mean I'm going to be making this first because you know me, but the first item on my list is a co-ord set. So this is a matching set that coordinate. So if you go on any website like Pretty Little Thing, Boohoo, any of those misguided and you can go on co set and you'll have a skirt and a top or leggings and a top that match at the same material, same design. Um, and they're usually sort of a crop top and a nice skirt. So I've got, I want to make a co set. Now I'm going to put a few images on screen of just things that I've seen from Pinterest. These are not my images, just that are giving me inspiration and what I want to work towards. And what I'm gonna do with these images is print them off and I'm gonna put them on this blank page here so that I, when I go and I'm looking, I can think, right, what am I working with and start sketching bits out. Um, my reasoning for doing that is I want a lot more, I want to focus a lot more on the resources I have. And at the moment I'm going through a social media fast. Um, I decided that I needed to just strip it all out for a little while. Um, I don't know if any of you look at how much time you spend on your phone, but I get the reports. And when you, when your phone's telling you you spent six hours on your screen in a day, what? What? That's ridiculous. And okay, the day that came up, I'd recorded for two hours, fine. But that's still four hours what was I doing on my phone for four hours? And if I wasn't on my phone for four hours, what could I get done? How much crochet could I produce? Like, what could I actually do with my time? How much reading could I get done? How much time could I spend with my loved ones? How much time could I spend in the gym doing the things that I really, really want to do? So alongside my church, which is doing a fast of food at the moment, I have given up social media and certain foods. Um, so, what I want is, when I have an image of what I want to make, I want to do a little um, sort of make my journal into a bit of um, a sketchbook, I guess. In that I'm going to put some of the images in here so I can just then solely focus on that project. Because what I find 
It's Pinterest is amazing. If you're not following me on there, please go follow. I spend so much time on there. I've got like nearing 35,000 pins. I've got like 2,000 followers. It gets a lot of my time because I've always got so much like going through my head, creativity, inspiration. But what I'm finding is rather than them working on what I've already got, I'm always looking for more. And I don't need more. I've got so many amazing projects in my head and so many amazing patterns to come out to you. So what I'm trying to do is I get an I get an idea, so this co-ord set, I'm gonna pin on it and then take the best of those images and put it in here. And then I'll leave pin interest alone until I get another I must, you know, you get them moments where this idea is amazing, I must work on it, and then I'll put it in here. And I'm hoping by that way I'll just stay a bit more focused. Let's see how it works. Um, so I'm not gonna be on social media for two weeks, guys. Two weeks, so if I've been quiet, that's why. The next item on my Make Nine is a bodysuit. Bodysuits are so on trend right now, and um, although it's not about making what's on trend, I, I do enjoy wearing a bodysuit. Um, so. I don't mind if any of these items on my list I sew, I knit or I crochet as long as I make them. They can be from my pattern or they can be from another existing pattern, it doesn't matter. For a bodysuit I have got the press studs already so I could, and I've been sent a pattern as well so I could sew one but I also really really want to knit one. Um, so. I mean, could I crochet one? I could crochet one. Would it sit the way I want? Would it be close enough not to show anything off? It's all things that I want to really play with and work with. You never know, I might decide to make one out of all three if I find the time and the desire takes me. So a bodysuit. Also, um, I've seen a few people on Instagram make bodysuits. So Knit Diaries page, she's definitely made bodysuits. Um, and there's a couple of others. And as I said, I bought the pop studs for this sometime last year, early on last year, I think maybe June, and they're just sat there waiting. So I've got everything I need, guys, I just need to focus. Okay, next item is a gym outfit. This will be sewn. I've already made gym leggings last year, but I'd like to make another pair. I'd like to make a matching top and maybe even a sports bra. I've got a gym outfit on there. So that's gonna be multiple items of clothing. Again, I'm gonna put some images up of patterns I've seen that I like. I like my gym leggings to be quite tight, very fitted, high-waisted, um, so when you squat, there's no builder's bum going on. Um, I would probably make a pair in a very jazzy print, but ultimately, I just like my all black. Um, and that is a bit boring to work on. But you know, I wear a lot of black. It's my go-to colour. So if I'm going to wear it, that's what I should make it in. There is really that argument of the process as opposed to the product. So I like the process of knitting and making with bright, bright materials. But when it comes to the product, I prefer to wear it when it's more muted. So, number four on my Make Nine is a pair of lacy socks. And again... You're gonna have images popping up. Dun, 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 dun. I adore sock knitting and I get in my own way when I sock knit, which I'm gonna tell you about when we get to the whips. Um, but I really, really, really want a lacy pair of socks. One of my friends that I went to Edinburgh Yarn Festival with, she made a lacy pair of socks and they just look so, so nice. And it's such a simple repeat so it's really something I want to do. I've made normal vanilla ones, but there's just something about the lace look that is so cute. Um, I've also got a new book, which I'm gonna show at the end in acquisitions. New stuff, um, and there's a few sock patterns in there. And there's also my lacy fern sock pattern. Remember that? That I was working on and I parked it because I wasn't happy on the heel. So it is my mission to find a heel that I'm happy with so I can release that pattern to you. So just a quick recap, co ord set, bodysuit, gym outfit, lacy socks. I mean, come on, the lacy socks are gonna take me what? 
next to no time at all. I could probably polish them off by the end of the month if I really wanted to. The cohort set, the fact that I've already done a pair of leggings, which I'm going to show you. I just need to do the top, so you know, I could have that polished off. Bodysuit, again, I think that might take a bit more time because of the sheer amount of um, maths involved in it. Which is why I'm very tempted to crochet it because it'd be quicker if I need to frog. So maybe I'd crochet it and then once I've got my head around the crochet I can then go on to work out how to knit. Because crochet is my first language so as long as I can do it in that I can translate it elsewhere. Um, so number five is cycle shorts which sounds so weird but it's quite like on point at the moment to wear cycle shorts that come to like here just above your knee and when I was crocheting my leggings when I got to that point in my knee I had multiple people say to me stop there and just leave them like that and so I'm going to make a pair like that which I will then wear for some sort of festival outing which I've never been to a festival before but I'll, I'll find something that I can wear them to and then like um yeah I can see the outfit in my head so I'm going to do those they will not take me long at all because once I've got my leggings tweaked to how I like, all I've got to do is stop just above the knee. So again, I think I can box that one off pretty quickly. I mean, I don't know if any of you not would want to wear them. Maybe when you see me wear them, you'll think, yeah, boy. So I'll put some pictures up. Hopefully my editing self is doing this right now for you. Okay, the sixth item on my make nine wow there's so much to tell you on this one is a dress that's all I've put quite simply dress now with this I have seen a pattern that I could sew that I would happily happily make I have seen patterns that I could crochet and patterns that I could knit as long as I make one then I'll fulfill this but I can really envisage me making multiple there are so many different styles of dresses for a start so I like to wear the more fitted bodycon type thing because anything bigger drowns me. Um, so I can very much see me knitting a more fitted dress. I can see me crocheting a more looser maxi dress as a bit of a cover up for like a summer day, trip, whatever. And I can see me sewing a amazing dress because why not? So again, and bombarding you with images of the dresses that I've got in mind. I have so many pins on Pinterest. If you're not on there, do go have a look. I'll put the links to my boards below. I've got one for crochet clothing, which is then I've split up into all these different sections. And whenever I'm scrolling, 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 or there's something on my mind, I pin it. And so I've got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of inspiration on there. So I'm just gonna put my, like, the ones that really sing to me on here for you. Again, none of these images are mine. So YouTube please, these images aren't mine. I'm not copying them. And if you want credit, hit me up and I'll put it below. Um, so yes, a dress. And um, again, I have got quite a few books and magazines that have got all of the, I've got, can you remember a while back, I got a magazine in the sale and it had a knitted dress which is really, really nice. I mean, all I need to do is get the yarn for it. I could get that done. Um, I've seen a few on Instagram that I'd love to make. So it is really, you know, without even having to design my own, I've seen dresses that I would happily make. And I would like to design my own because I've got some hella cool ideas in my head. Um, but I'm gonna sketch out a few and then pick what I'm gonna make rather than just jump in Okay, I might jump in and also we'll add sometimes when you're making something it doesn't go as planned But then you get another great idea from it and that has happened for one of my whips Okay, two left to go Number eight I have put an indie designed pattern So I want to have an item in my wardrobe for 2019 that I have made from another indie designer so another person like me but more 
established because I'll actually have printed patterns already, published them. I want to make one of their patterns. There are so many amazing designers out there and I want to support them. And also I'm just really intrigued to try different construction types and techniques. And so the more I make from other people, the more like the wealth of knowledge that I can build. And there's just some amazing, amazing patterns out there. I said before about the Sensum sweater. I've said before um, about some of Katie Jones items. There are, there's so much to choose from. And as for indie designers that I really like, my favorite ones on Instagram are Mermaid Cap Designs, Evelyn and Peter. Um, oh, I can see another one, but I can't tell you it right now. That's gonna annoy me. And as I'm on an Instagram ban, I don't know how I'm gonna get a name to put it on here. <sighs> but she lives in Canada and she makes great, great clothes. Um, and then you've got Abigail Rose Crochet. She does some great designs. So I just want to make sure that I am supporting other indie designers and making loads of great items. So as long as I do one, this will be ticked, but again, I can see me making a few. And that brings me to my last object for my Make 9 of 2019. And that is, I want to make an outfit I can wear in the office. A little bit random, I guess, but I spend a good 60% of my time, I guess. That's just, I've just plucked that figure out of nowhere. In an office at work. And so I want to make clothes that I can wear at work because I spend most of my time in work clothes and I know we all begrudge spending money on clothes we wear to work but we spend so much time there we may as well look good, feel good and get use out of what we wear. So whether I sew that item, whether I crochet it, whether I knit it, I'd like a whole outfit for the office. Again, just going to put up some images to show you. So that's my make nine for 2019 anyone else doing that or has anyone else got a list of projects they want to make I'm going to print off all of my pictures to put on that page to go alongside of that so that's my make nine tribe which I've never set out to do before but I feel like it fits for me right now okay so I've been talking at you for ages and I haven't actually shown you anything I'm working on so here we go finished objects. I feel like I need some sort of momentous, might find a bit of editing music in like fireworks or something. Leggings! Why? Why have I recorded in black showing you black? This is black sparkle yarn. You can see the waistband that I've made. I've crochet, they're high waisted and then they go down into leggings. Now, I'm going to put these on to show you. I'm just going to say I haven't sewn the ends in. There are ends everywhere. So although it's a finished object, this is a work in progress. So let me put them on and then I'll explain to you why I'm not finishing these off and what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go over there, put these on. Oh my goodness, this could end badly. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's stop being silly. I have made a pair of high waisted leggings. Now, oh, let me bring my tripod back in a little bit. Oopsie. Okay, made high waisted leggings. I'm really, really pleased with them. I got the idea from watching, well, from seeing, her name's Norvana on Instagram, and she makes her own crochet clothing, and she is so successful with it, goals. And I YouTubed how to make them, and I found a tutorial by Naturally Danielle, um, and she sort of just talks you through how to do it. There's no set pattern or anything, she just tells you how she does it. So I started my own pair using this sparkle yarn which is from the pound shop here and it's like 
Um, I was going to try and show you the end, but it doesn't come up high enough. Um, it is 50 gram balls, but you get two balls. If you buy two balls, you get a third for free. So it costs you two pound for 150 grams. Um, and I, I haven't actually weighed these, but I didn't use a, a, a. So I sat about doing them. A couple of times I wanted to give up on them, I'm not going to lie, and that is because I just felt I was too in over my head. And so I just simplified the whole process and thought, right, I'll concentrate on, I need to make a waistband, and then I'll work out how to do the shaping for the hips, and then I'll work out how to do the crotch, and then I'll work out... And by breaking it down and making it that simpler, it was no longer this big task that I didn't know what to do. And I got them done really quite quickly, considering the amount that I did need to frog. So... The reason I haven't sewn the ends in is because I'm not, I'm not 100% happy, I'm not even, I'd say I'm about 75% happy with them, and so rather than sew the ends and have yarn that I'm never going to use because I'm not going to wear them, I decided to leave it. I'm making a second pair, but I'm leaving these as they are so that I can refer to them and check the fit, and make tweaks as I go along on pair number two, and then once pair number two is finished, this pair will get frogged. Um, again, it's a little bit frustrating, but you learn crocheting by doing, and so if I just sat and thought about it, I could plan it out, but you don't know how the fabric's going to be until you actually use it, and you don't know how they're going to fit until you really try them on as you go along, so that's cool. Um, and I mean, I use relatively cheap yarn, so... It's no biggie if the yarn didn't get used, but I don't want to waste it. Um, and it's it will be a bit fluffy because it's been frogged, but that's fine. So the changes I want to make. Number one is the waistband. I did a simple crochet rib, which I learned to do when I was doing my granny square jumper. See how this all feeds in? It's really cool. Um, the problem with that rib is it does have stretch on it. But my waist to my hips is a 10 inch difference. And so in order for these to get up over my hips, I need it relatively baggy with a bit of ease. And so to do that, once I then pull them up, the waistband is really big. Can you see? I'm not keen on that. So there's been a few suggestions to put a drawstring in, which I could on this pen and maybe salvage them. But I really want it elasticated. So I'm going to put an elastic waist in. The other thing is I want the fit. I feel like I made them just a bit too long and the crotch is a bit too low and I look a little bit like I pooed myself. So I'm going to just shorten that a bit. And then I don't, I can't decide whether to elasticate the cuffs or not. It's neither, hot, near, it's neither here nor there with the, the cuffs. They fit really well anyway. Um, I don't know, I'll try it, I could do it. Um, and that's that's it really, in terms of changes. So not a lot, not a lot of tweaks, but it does mean I've got to make an entire new pair. Um, because I made them top down, I want to change the waistband on these and I want to shorten the from my hips down so I'd have to rip it all back anyway. Um, yeah, so what do you think to the It was the last finished object of 2018 actually, but I've only just had a chance to show you it now. Oh, I keep rolling over my blanket. Um, which takes me on to my whip. Well, I've got two, three, but it takes me on to one whip. One of them being, oh, here's the yarn. This is the yarn I'm using. Sparkly, sparkly. Okay. So I then decided I wanted to put the elasticated waist in. I went back to the pound shop and I got some elastic. I wonder if there's any in here to show you. And it's just, uh -huh. A thin bit of elastic. Um, I don't know how, how big that is. Half an inch maybe, a centimetre or so. 
and I've just sewn it up in the back um, so that I could crochet over it for the waistband. Now then, so I've done that, no problem, I've sewn it up, um, I'm not bothered about it looking messy because it's going to be covered and then I was like, how am I going to cover it? Because if I crochet a casing around it, it's not going to stretch. Um, and then I had suggestions that maybe I should make a large rib and then fold that rib over. But again, it'd be cased and it's not going to stretch because the yarn doesn't stretch. So then, and I was talking about this on my YouTube live as well. And then I said, right, what I'm going to do is crochet over the elastic. So I did that. But the thing is, because I've crocheted over the elastic, it produces so many more stitches than what are on my leggings. So I either decrease it heavily or it's not suitable for purpose. So these were going to be a pair of leggings, but now this is going to be part of a skirt. Um, as I was saying, you start designing something, you don't create what you actually intended, but you come up with something really cool. So let me just put it away for me so you can see it. All I've done is I've crocheted, put enough stitches over this band so that it's covered when it's not stretched. And when it is stretched, it's still relatively covered. Um, I w I'm not 100% keen on it because you can see the elastic a little bit when you stretch it but I'm okay enough to continue. Um, and so I decided it's not right for leggings, but I could make a pretty amazing skirt. So I did a few sketches and I've come up with this peplum skirt. <laughs> and I've also got other skirt variations on here that I could maybe do. But I'm going to concentrate on this one for now. Um, my only thing with it is I, I want the back to trail down. And so if I keep going round and round, the whole thing's going to get bigger. So I need to find a way that I can just do the back. And I'm not sure if I stop and then start doing it in rows, that it will carry on growing. But I'm going to try it because it's just a process. And then what I think I'm going to do is, because I want to make it into a skirt, is that underneath, where I've already put markers, I'm going to crochet around the inside and make a figure-hugging skirt. So it will look like a two-piece, but it will be an all-in-one. So that is the start of a peplum skirt that I am now working on. Um, but as for the leggings, I've gone and got a thicker band of elastic, it's like three mil, three mil, what am I on about? Three inches, um, and I'm gonna cro uh, sew it together into a waistband, I'm gonna blanket stitch around the bottom, and then I'm gonna make my leggings off it, so that I will then get that fit that I want here, because that is not cool. But out of that, I've got a new skirt project. Now, I was like, how am I going to make this into my Make 9? Not everything has to be on my Make 9, but how can I how can I incorporate that? So I could make it into part of a dress. Or it could be part of my office outfit, or it could be another co-ord set. So watch this space because I'm trying to make these leggings has come up with another great idea. So that's one of my whips. Stitch markers I'm using, my HG that I made, a cross that I got from eBay, and then on the inside, this is a Thomas Sabo charm from a bracelet that cost about 30 quid. It's now a stitch marker. And I've also got a Buddha. And that is living in my amazing Harry Potter bag that Josie made. Um, and she is on Facebook and I'll put the link below my Marauders map bag with all of my amazing pin badges this bag goes everywhere with me 
absolutely everywhere. It's big enough that I can put about 400 grams of yarn in it, whether that's as a project or that I'm crocheting up. And once it gets too big for that, then it just goes into a different project bag. Um, so these leggings did actually live in here whilst I was making them. So that's whip number one. Whew, it's getting warm in here. I just want to take this moment to say, um, because I wanted to simplify my life, cut a bit of hair sticking up, I knew that in order for YouTube to continue, I needed to make it so it was a little bit more enjoyable and work for my lifestyle. So that means for 2019, there's gonna be a few changes with the podcast. Um, change number one is that I'm only going to be putting out a vlog every fortnight. So every second Sunday, there will be a vlog going up. Um, my reason being is because I sometimes feel like I'm really scrabbling to find content to give to you, to show you, because I just haven't had the time to make anything. With working the hours that I do and, you know, life responsibilities, I don't always get a lot of time to make and so there isn't a lot to show you and that puts a bit of pressure on. So I'd rather take a step back and rather than set up and sit here and record and not really feel like I'm showing you anything good, I'd rather spend that time and that time I'd spend editing on just making because that is what it's all about and then pop up here every two weeks just to show you how I'm getting on. So I'm hoping that you'll still follow along and if you aren't subscribed that you'll subscribe press the bell notification so that when the vlogs go up you are um, notified so you can come along and watch um, that doesn't mean I'm stepping back from YouTube in any way because it's not like that I just want to bring proper content to you and I want to take some of that pressure off so I can just enjoy my making a bit more last year I put out about 50 vlogs which is one every week it takes me about an hour or so to record. I mean, this one's gonna be well over an hour. Um, it takes me about three to four hours to edit. And doing that every week, that's a good, that's basically my entire Saturday. Um, and I, I would quite like to take one of those Saturdays back and be able to go do stuff with the people I love and knit and crochet while I'm doing it. So I can then show you all. So that is what I'm gonna do. Um, I don't think it will affect the, the podcast too much. I mean, people like Ot Lottie and Albert do fortnightly and they're a raging success. So I just hope you're still gonna stick with me and HGDC. Um, and also to simplify my life, I normally have to record when the lighting is good because I didn't have light, but I finally took the plunge. I tried to sit and record last Saturday to put a vlog out for you. It was a grey, miserable day, and it was so dark in here. Um, I'll show you what it looks like without the lights. And then put them back on and look at the difference. It just means that although the lighting isn't great, I can just set up and I can just record. And that gives me so much more flexibility. So I can do this in the early hours of the morning if I want, when I can't sleep, if the house is empty. I can do it late at night. And also, I wanted the lights because when I did the YouTube live, the quality wasn't the greatest. It's not gonna be because you're live, but I wanted the lighting to be better because I did do that at about half nine in the evening um, GMT time because although I'm only gonna be putting two pre-recorded vlogs up a month, or every second Sunday, I would really, really, really like to do another live session more frequently, more regularly with you. So it's my intention to maybe do them every month if you lot are interested. And I thought for the next one, what we could do is a crochet along. So we could all bring our whips and we can all sit and work on it, on the whips. Um, eventually I'd love to have it that we're all working on a project that I've made a pattern for, but because I don't have any patterns for you at the moment, just for us all to sit here, knit, crochet, sew, whatever you want to do, all together. Um, you can ask me questions, we can have a good chat. I would really, really love to do that. 
And what I also love about YouTube Live is I get to interact with you, which is why I'm here. And there's no editing. I just, I say bye and then it uploads and it's done. And that is amazing. That oh, is such a good feeling. So hopefully some of you are interested. If you are, please comment below. Yes, I'm in for the YouTube Live. And let me know where you live and what time would suit you best because I might have to do a couple of different ones. So maybe in February I'll do one that's late night here so it's earlier there for you. Maybe I'll do one early hours of the morning here so it's earlier in the evening for you if you're in America. I think I'm just going to play with the timings and see what works for me, what works for you. Um, but that's something that I really, really want to do. I had so much fun doing that YouTube live. That is what it's about for me. So I want to make that more regular. So comment below. Yes, I'm in for the YouTube live. Let me know where you live and what time suits you best. It will be a weekend. So Friday night, Saturday night, let me know what time it works for you. Um, I can kind of see it being a Saturday night, really. Because Saturday nights are generally my own. But let me know and I'll sort of collate the results and we'll go from there. Um, so I think that's everything for HGDC for 2019. I've got one more whip on the go that I'm going to show you today, and it's a knitting project. It's living in this Deathly Hallows project bag made by Josie Rose on Facebook, and I absolutely adore it. And living in this big old bag, can you remember what I put in here? It's a pair of socks and this is how far I've got. Now I am making the fluorite socks from the pom pom mag which is not in here. Where did I put that? Oh it's here. Silly me. I got this from Edinburgh Yarn Festival and the fluorite socks look like They're a faded pair of socks, which go really high up. I mean, they're just under her knee. So, I have got the first sock finally cast on. I cast these on two at a time, and then because I hadn't done a Turkish cast on before, because I hadn't pearled a toe before, I was really struggling, and I kept putting them down because I wanted to do them two at a time because I kept saying in my head it would make it easier. I just thought, hold up, let me simplify this. I love making socks. If I have to do each sock individually, that's no hardship because I, I really enjoy knitting on them. And I think I will get more from learning this new technique by doing them singly. So I just cast on the one sock. Um, I cast it on on when Monday. And this is everything that I did. In, no, sorry. I cast it on Sunday night and I did the tiniest bit of the toe. And then everything else I put on on Monday. And then I haven't touched them since. Um, the reason being I've got to the heel and I need to teach myself how to wrap and turn. And so I've got a practice in here on some chunkier before I go on to this and potentially mess it up. So you actually knit these inside out. So the toe will be knit when, you, when you're wearing them. And you will see the pearl on the foot um, in the body of the sock. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So I went with a dark purple and then it fades into this lighter one. And I'm now just ready to start the heel. I'm using, this was the colour for the toe and the part of the foot. Then this is the colour I'm using as the second colour. My hair's undone itself and it's in the way. This is the third colour. And then this is the lighter colour, the fourth. And what I'm going to do, to get these as high up as what they are in the picture, because I mean this, this is up to my, this is going to have the heel in this second colour. I'm going to knit them as far as I can with each colour now to get them quite high up, otherwise they're going to be relatively short. I normally make quite short ones. And as well, my calves are so much wider than my ankles. I'm going to have to do some serious increasing. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with them. 
see if I can put it on. Oh, it's so warm. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Love them. Um, never paddled a toe before, so that posed a little bit of a challenge. Here we go. Look at that. I really like that the body is paddled because I feel like that fade is a lot more subtle than on the knit side. It just looks stripy on the knit side. The only thing is, and I know I'm being really rude, but look at the shape of this. Does it remind you of something rude? Because it reminds me of something rude. <laughs> and talking of something rude, when I did the YouTube live, some troll came along and commented and I said I read it out and it was a rude comment. Um, so if you haven't watched the YouTube live, go and watch it just so you can see what rude words I had to say. But anyway, so I'm ready to do the heel and I'm going to put those in. I'm going to go to my friends after I've recorded this and then I'm going to sit and put the heel in with her whilst we have a catch up. Um, and then once it gets to the leg, I'll be really nippy with that and I, I imagine that'll be done really soon and I can start number two. Which just goes to prove that if there's a task that you're struggling with, break it down into as many different parts as you can. I really wanted to do them two at a time so they'd be perfectly matched and it would be easier for me. Even though I said to you last year, I keep doing this, I keep saying I'm going to do them two at a time because it's easier and it's more logical. And then I don't knit anything. So get out of your own way, Heather. Get out of your own way. Um, so that just leads me on to my acquisitions. I didn't get any more yarn. Don't know. No, no more yarn, but I got a new book. And it's this book, and it's called Soctopus. And it's by Alice Yu. And it's got 17 different pairs of socks in here. Ta -da! Now, this was a Christmas present, and it has got the, like, the anatomy of a sock and how you should make them. And it's got like a vanilla pear. I love the photography. And then it's got a lacy pear, which I want to make for my make nine. So let me flick through to those. They've got charts and then they've got written instructions. So I want to have a go at using both. I think it'd be good if I can learn to knit from a chart. Hmm. Maybe should have marked this before. So you're going to have to sit and watch me flick, watch me flick, and then watch me nine nine. Mm -hmm. um, because there's just this picture of the toe and I was just like, yes, that is what I'm talking about. I think that orange, yeah boy. Now I don't want to show you the pattern. Uh, this will be fun. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness. Isn't that just divine? Can you see? You can see. They are amazing. And they are called the, where's, where's the bigger picture? Wow. And they are called the They're called Rumpled. Um and she's put the first sock of my 2010 knit love club. This was an instant hit. I love the elegant stitch pattern and the lovely textured fabric it creates that looks like wheat sheaf. The name for the sock is the word is a word play on rumple stilt skin. The guy who helped a farm girl spin wheat into gold in exchange for her firstborn, but who in his hubris got rumbled in the end. And they just look amazing. So, check it out. It was in the works and it was £3, which is a bargain. And my grandma wants a copy too. Um, 
so I would definitely be working on a pair of those. Let's try to tie this back up. Um, so yeah, tribe, that is me saying happy 2019, happy new year. Um, there are some changes going on around here, but it will all be for the better. Um, I'm working on so many great, great projects. I've got so much lined up. Um, so hopefully you'll see this year through with me. Um, yeah. So I'm going to see you again in two weeks time, two Sundays time. Um, so make sure you click subscribe, make sure you put the notifications on so you know when the next vlog comes out. Please comment below, yes I'm in for the YouTube live and where you live, what time suits you best so that I can start arranging that. I'd love to do one the end of February. Um, which gives me enough time to let you all know and for us all to put it in our calendars um, and I am now going to go because I've been here for ages I think that's going to be well some of you might see it as a good thing I see it as a good thing the vlogs that you do get fine you're not going to get one every week but rather than getting a half an hour one you're going to get a decent length one because there's going to be that much more to show and tell um, and it also frees me up a little bit to go and do different events because um, I can go and take the footage and I've got a bit of time then to get it edited because I don't have this strict schedule I'm trying to adhere to so there's lots of great things coming to a simplified 2019 thank you so so much for watching um, let me know if you want to see the vlogs on simplify on my bullet journals because that's something that I would really really love to bring to the chat to the channel I might just do it and if you don't want to watch it you don't want to watch it and that's fine by me too so have a lovely couple of weeks um shout out to my patreons for the lighting because it's amazing now you guys are awesome you are absolutely amazing you were so so good to me in december um i hope you've enjoyed the posts that have gone up so far for you and to the tribe in general I love you guys so much, so I'm going to head off now, I want to go and get some knitting done, um, have a wonderful couple of weeks, happy making and I'll see you again soon.